Yeah, there are issues, but uh, think of it as there are markets in markets in Sweden. There are markets that are very high end and they sell very slowly these days. It takes longer for the newly constructed. But, you know, the uh, overall in Sweden, people move, we see good activity and we take our market share. There's been a lot of volatility in markets lately, which has had ramifications on some of the yield spreads. What sort of implications have you been seeing in the business? We haven't really been affected by it. I think it's we've seen um, uh, we've seen hesitancy around it for a time, but uh, you know the normal activity came back. And what I think that we see now is we see a stabilisation of the prices, and we also see that activities back to more normal levels. And you've also just uh, coming on the back of uh, an election and that happened six weeks ago and still to this day there's been no government formation. I'm just wondering whether the political backdrop is posing uh, some of a headwind to the Swedish economy from as what you can tell uh, just looking at the lending volumes and also looking at customer transactions over the last couple of weeks. Do you think that the political backdrop is beginning to bite a little bit? You know, not really. I think that uh, things are sort of moving at the usual pace. I think it's very unfortunate that there's not a government because I think we need uh, housing reforms, we need for jobs and labour market. Uh, so the longer it takes, the more that will be postponed. And what we need, and I often talk about this, we need housing reforms for you know, ordinary people with ordinary salaries because there's a huge demand out there and there's not that many uh, housing opportunities or flats out there that at the lower price end. Can I ask you about money laundering? Because we've had a couple of big cases yes. that have really rocked the banking community in Europe from Nordea to Danska. And your bank in particular mm. was formally warned by the Central Bank of Lithuania at the start of the year about some of the control procedures. What changes have you made behind that many investors would not be aware of that are strengthened money laundering conditions? No, I think that what we, uh, the, the Lithuanian one, that was a as you rightly say, that was about the control procedures that had already been mitigated. But I think the important thing in this money laundering case that we see one of our competitors have in Estonia is the fact that Swedbank is completely different. We run a retail bank in four countries. We focus on domestic corporates, domestic private individuals, and that is a completely different setup. I also think that there's a difference in the fact that we are low risk bank and that goes for AML and money laundering too. We work with KYC, we work with the systems, we work with monitoring, but we are also humble enough to understand that this is a really, really complex issue. So we reach out, we reach out to US banks, to domestic banks, to regulators, to the police, and get all the help we can from everybody else. And then the third thing, which I think is a cultural thing about Swedbank, Bank, every time we see anything, we act, and we act forcefully. And that, that we've done for years. I'm and that's a big difference. I'm curious about one of your comments this morning that financial crime is evolving and can be unpredictable. At what point does technology make it easier to, to catch up with the criminals and sort of beat them at their own game? Already today, it's much easier. But I think that you can never, you still have to be humble. You still have to reach out to others in the market. So anyone who sees something shares it with you. And this is something we work with to make sure that we get that kind of information so we can check our own, we can see if somebody has had a laundry attempt, as we call it, on Swedbank, because it is really complex. But just looking at the breakdown of your operations at your Baltic Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.